Good morning. Welcome as we join together today to honor the life and the sacrifice of Trooper Jacques F. Rougeau, Jr. We begin in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Let us pray. Father, the death of Jay has plunged our lives into darkness. Separated from him, we are broken. We are adrift. Grant us your healing grace for the days ahead. Give us confidence that Jay is safe, that his life is complete with you. Help us to accept the reality of what has happened and enable us to find comfort and peace in your presence and in the love of family and friends. Deepen our trust in Christ that you have bridged the great chasm which is open between us. And at the last, you will bring us all together again with all the faithful into the light of your presence. We ask this through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. This time I'd like to invite you to be seated. We will be playing America the Beautiful. The words are in your bulletin. Please feel free to sing along if you would like. Our first reading this morning comes from the fourth chapter of 2 Corinthians. But we have this treasure in clay jars, so that it may not be made so that it may be made clear that this extraordinary power belongs to God and does not come from us. We are afflicted in every way but not crushed, perplexed but not driven to despair, persecuted but not forsaken, struck down but not destroyed, always carrying in the body the death of Jesus Christ so that the life of Jesus may also be made visible in our bodies. For while we live, we are always being get given up to death for Jesus' sake, so that the life of Jesus may be made visible in our mortal flesh. 
So death is at work in us, but life is in you. But just as we have the same spirit of faith that is in accordance with Scripture, I believed and so I spoke. We also believe and so we speak. Because we know that the one who raised the Lord Jesus will raise us also, will bring us into your presence. Yes, everything is for your sake. So that grace, as it extends to more and more people, may increase thanksgiving to the glory of God. So that we do not lose heart. Even though our outer nature is wasting away, our inner nature is being renewed day by day. For this slight momentary affliction is preparing us for eternal weight of glory beyond all measure. Because we look not to what can be seen, but to what cannot be seen. For what can be seen is temporary but what cannot be seen is eternal. Here ends our first reading. Our psalm today is Psalm 23. The Lord is my shepherd, I shall not want. He makes me to lie down in green pastures. He leads me beside still waters. He restores my soul. He leads me in right paths for his namesake. Even though I walk through the valley of the shadow of death, I shall fear no evil. For you are with me, your rod and your staff, they comfort me. You prepare a table before me in the presence of my enemies. You anoint my head with oil. My cup overflows. Surely goodness and mercy shall follow me all the days of my life. And I shall dwell in the house of the Lord my whole life long. Our Holy Gospel today comes from the 11th chapter of St. John. And this is the story where Jesus finds out his friend Lazarus has passed away. Jesus said to her, I am the resurrection and the life. Those who believe in me, even though they die, they will live, and everyone who lives and believes in me will never die. Do you believe this? She said to him, Yes, Lord, I believe that you are the Messiah, the Son of God, the one coming into the world. When Jesus saw her weeping, and the Jews who came with her also weeping, he was greatly disturbed in spirit and deeply moved. He said, Where have you laid him? And they said, Lord, come and see. And Jesus wept. So those around him said, see how he loved him. Here ends our reading of the Holy Gospel. This time I would like to invite forward Governor Josh Shapiro. stand before you today with a heavy heart and a profound gratitude for the community that is gathered here today to celebrate Trooper Jacques Rougeau's life. To every member of the Pennsylvania State Police and to the women and men of law enforcement from across our Commonwealth and our country who gather with us today I want you to know that we thank you and that we stand with you. I also want you to know that we honor your service. Today, led by Colonel Paris, your fellow Pennsylvanians join you in mourning. To Jay's mother, Angela, stepfather, Carlo, to his siblings, Christina and Justin, to his grandparents, Emily and Papa Chip, and especially to his wife, Chloe. My wife, Lori, our First Lady, and I extend to all of you our most heartfelt prayers. I'm privileged to be in your presence today and humbled that you asked me to honor the memory of your son and your husband as we remember Trooper Rougeau and celebrate his meaningful life, we also recognize you and we salute you for the sacrifice you made for our collective safety. The killing of Trooper Rougeau has touched us all. 
and the tears and prayers stretch from this community here in northwestern Pennsylvania all across our vast commonwealth. I received wishes and prayers for Jay from Pennsylvanians from all walks of life, from the construction workers on I-95 to our children sitting around our family dinner table. I'm keenly aware that no words spoken, no tribute offered, can convey the depth of loss that you feel right now. Yet, it is my hope through all of our words and through all of our prayers that you will appreciate the hero that your son was, the hero that your husband was, that your brother and your friend was, and to know that he lived a life of purpose. A dedicated trooper and public servant, Jay Rougeau was a warm, positive presence in every room. His smile and his love for life were obvious to everyone who met him whether he was cheering on Penn State football or playing with their boxers, Winner, Winnie, and Charlie. Jay loved basketball, too, playing pickup games at the Corey Y. I wish I could have gotten a chance to play with him. But I'm told that his love of basketball was not just playing the game, but also mentoring local kids during youth basketball games. In every part of his life, Jay wanted to give back and serve others. That's why even before he graduated college, Jay applied for a summer internship with the Corey Police Department. He always wanted to be in law enforcement, a noble profession, because that meant serving his community. He had a servant's heart. And he was the kind of public servant who lived every day putting others before himself, whether he was in uniform or not. And while 29 years on this earth was not enough, Jay left an indelible mark on all of us. Last week, I went to visit with some members of Troop G together with the Colonel to check in on them, to learn more about their colleague and friend. There was a real love and respect for Jay in that room. And while you could feel the sadness and the heartbreak among them, sharing stories about Trooper Rougeau brought smiles to so many of their faces. I was struck by how one of his fellow troopers referred to Jay as stealthy. That was the word they used. When I inquired what he meant by that, he shared with me that Jay quietly and professionally nabbed the bad guys with great skill and little fanfare. He didn't brag. He was just doing his job for our community, keeping people safe, doing what he loved. He was never one to boast, I'm told, or to celebrate how many cases he solved or arrests he made. I'm told that if you didn't actually catch him in the act of making the arrest, you might not even hear about it because he would just go about his business, working on the next case, working for our safety. He was focused on doing the job and serving others. Ever humble, ever helping, Jay Rougeau was the very best of us. He was everything we could ask for in a patriot, a true example of someone who loved his country, loved his commonwealth, and served it every day. That's how he lived on June 17th. That Saturday was Jay's day off. He could have decided to take his well-deserved rest and enjoy the weekend with Chloe and their dogs. But that's not who he was. 
when he heard that his fellow troopers and his community were under attack, Jay activated himself. He raced to the station, he put on his gear, and he got in a patrol car to protect his community. Jay's life was stolen from us because he drove toward danger to protect the rest of us. We should celebrate his heroism, and we must never forget it. It is our responsibility to ensure that Jay's legacy becomes a calling for everyone here to salute the work that he did and to have the backs of our state police and our law enforcement every day, everywhere. That's our duty now. My own faith teaches me that no one is required to complete the task, but neither are we free to refrain from it. That means each of us has a responsibility to one another and to Trooper Rougeau to make sure that not only his memory, but his legacy lives on. Every single day in communities like Mifflin Town and in others large and small, Pennsylvania law enforcement officers and state troopers like Jay run toward danger to protect us. That work, that courage, that commitment, that love of country and commonwealth, that is Trooper Rougeau's legacy. Chloe, I know that Jay was someone that you've had by your side since kindergarten. Your soulmate and your high school sweetheart. After I, we had our telephone call the other day, I shared with Lori, with my wife, the story that you told me when I pointed out that I had read your high school sweethearts, you corrected me. And you told me that you met when you were about five years old in kindergarten. And then about a decade later, you finally shared with each other that you were both madly in love with one another. Lori and I smiled when I shared that story with her. Thank you for sharing it with me. It caused me to hug my wife a little closer than maybe I otherwise would have. I hope that the love that you shared with Jay inspires all of us to hold our loved ones a bit closer and to appreciate life's blessings. Chloe, I offer you the deepest, most heartfelt condolences on behalf of 13 million Pennsylvanians. I pray that you will be comforted by the outpouring of love and admiration and deep appreciation for your husband's service. We are never going to forget you or your husband's sacrifice. I know that to be true. I know that for so many reasons. I know that because today Stephanie Mack and Brittany Siska are with us. Their husbands were taken from us in Philadelphia about a year ago, Troopers Martin Mack and Brandon Siska. They're here today in Erie on the other side of our Commonwealth, alongside the wives of other fallen troopers. During their own time of loss, our Commonwealth has consistently come together to lift them up. And they're here today to do the same for you. Chloe, today and every day going forward, we commit to do the same for you and for the entire family. We will always be here for you. We will never forget Trooper J. Rougeau. And I know that Colonel Paris and the women and men of the Pennsylvania State Police will continue to live out every day by doing the work that their friend and colleague did so very well. They'll continue to do that stealthy police work. They'll keep us safe. And just like Jay, they will serve our community with humility. And for that, we owe a tremendous debt of gratitude to Jay Rougeau and to Martin Mack and Brandon Siska.
to every state trooper whose name is etched on the wall of honor, and to each and every one of you who go toward danger to protect the rest of us. In this most difficult time, may God be our refuge and our strength. May God bless those who put on the uniform every day to serve our community. May God continue to watch over Lieutenant James Wagner and his wife Cindy and their three boys as we pray collectively for his recovery. And may God bless the Rougeau family and the members of Troop G. May you find comfort and strength in one another. And may Trooper Jacques Rougeau's memory forever be a blessing. This time I would like to invite forward Sergeant Jonathan Colarusa. morning. On behalf of Ms. Chloe Rougeau, Ms. Angela Gervasio, and the entire Rougeau family, the 160th cadet class, Governor Shapiro, Colonel Paris, the deputy commissioners, and friends and colleagues of Trooper Jacques Rougeau, Jr., I would like to thank you all for joining us today. Trooper Rougeau would be proud of the respect you've shown to him and will be honored by your presence. My name is Jonathan Colarusso. I'm a sergeant in the criminal investigation section in Troop J. First and foremost, I cannot begin to tell you how honored and truly humbled I am to be standing before you today. Trooper Rougeau, or J, was an exceptional representative of the Pennsylvania State Police and an even better person. I was fortunate enough to cross paths with Jay when I promoted to sergeant in 2021 and was assigned as a patrol section supervisor at Troop J York under the command of Lieutenant Joseph Spengler. When I arrived to York in April of 2021, Trooper Rougeau had recently completed field training and was out on his own. York County is a very interesting ecosystem to say the least. The York guys know what I'm talking about. For those who don't, York is a fairly large station that tends to have its disproportionate share of unusual and complicated incidents. It's the perfect training ground for new troopers because they have no choice but to hit the ground running, apply their training and their intuition, and figure it out. Jay accepted that challenge and met it head on by devoting his time to honing his craft and spending extra hours of his own time to master the art of police work. It didn't take long to figure out who Jay was. As I began to receive preliminary reports on the quality and competence of the patrol troopers at the station, Jay's name was immediately mentioned as a top performer and a man on the rise. His two field training officers, Trooper Rebecca Taylor and Trooper Jonathan Lear, paved the way for his ascent. One of the first times I was in the patrol room uh, when I met Jay, and in walks this young man, looking like a PSP poster child. He was fit, confident, and had a million dollar smile. My first thought was, truth be told, I wonder if this kid can outrun me. 
Now I thought I could take him. I later did some research on Jay and found out about his stellar athletic career at Cory Area High School and what an outstanding basketball player he was. I quickly changed my mind and conceded, yeah, he'd probably get me. In that first encounter, I felt compelled to engage him. He just looked like the type of person you could approach to strike up a conversation. And I was really interested to hear his story. That first day, we talked for a few minutes and I learned a lot. My first and most obvious takeaway was his love and admiration for his wife, Chloe. My second takeaway was his love for Penn State football and attending games with Chloe, family, and friends. I'm a graduate of the University of Pittsburgh and a proud Pitt Panther. So right away, we developed a friendly battle about which football program was better. This turned into weekly joking with each other about the respective teams. Now, Jay was very respectful and considerate of our chain of command. But after a few months of back and forth, we developed a friendly relationship. That's about the point when he hit me with an all-timer that left me speechless. He had requested a day off on a weekend and I knew that Penn State was playing a home game. I approved the leave and eventually I bumped into Jay in the hallway. And I said, you know, Rougeau, it's never too late to jump on Pitt's bandwagon. And with that perfect smile, he responded, Sarge, you're welcome to come up to Happy Valley on Saturday if you want to watch a real football team. <laughs> My respect was earned at that point and deep down, that response told me I knew Jay had the confidence and the ability to do this job and to do it well. During my time at York, Jay was assigned to fourth platoon, and they rotated through AM and PM shifts. Trooper Rougeau was supervised by retired Corporal Sean Taylor, Corporal Matt Kabasinski, and Corporal Justin Marquis. While he worked and interacted with everyone at the York Station, both in criminal investigation and patrol, his platoon mates during my time there consisted of Troopers Bryce Smith, Dave Ferrier, Rebecca Taylor, Jeremy De La Cruz, Steve Knickel, Shane Dressler, Alicia Rohrer, Jake Pennerwood, and PCO's Matthew Kidd and Casey Mowry. Most, if not all, are in attendance today. Fourth platoon had a unique bond and relationship that was only enhanced by Trooper Rougeau's leadership and camaraderie. He was a galvanizing force for his platoon and for the station as a whole. I had the opportunity to talk about Jay with some of the fourth platoon members before speaking to you all today. The recurring theme was the same with each trooper. They spoke of each other as brothers and described Jay similarly. I heard it over and over again. He was a model trooper. He was selfless, he was respectful, he was kind, he was smart, he was articulate, and he was courageous. His platoon made it a point to tell me that when his transfer to Ju Troop G was approved, he never slowed down. He was proactive, quote, up to his last shift. That's the man that Trooper Jacques Rougeau was. And that is the type of man I can only hope my son becomes someday. Ladies and gentlemen, I just spoke for a few minutes about my relationship with Jay and his importance to me personally and to the Pennsylvania State Police. Speaking from the heart, I absolutely love this kid. He had every quality and capability all of us would want in a law enforcement officer, a spouse, a son, a brother, and a friend. We are indebted to him, to Chloe, to Angela, and to his family for the heroism he displayed on June 17th, and to the sacrifice he made to safeguard the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. The core values of the Pennsylvania State Police are honor, service, integrity, respect, trust, courage, and duty. Trooper Rougeau lived out those core values every day of his life. We owe him and his family a debt of gratitude and a lifetime of praise. Thank you.
At this time, I would like to invite forward Sergeant Lucas Rankin. It's truly impressive to be here in the presence of so many men and women who have dedicated their lives to public service. I want to thank you all for being here today for Jay and his family. Governor, Sarge, thank you both for your heartfelt words about Jay. You both did an outstanding job describing what an amazing young man, husband, son, and trooper Jay was. I'm going to spend some time on some stories about Jay because I can't add any more to what the two of you have already presented. When Chloe asked me to speak today, I was completely honored by her request. I had only known Jay for three months, but it feels like he's been a part of the Lewistown family for years. Immediately, I knew Jay was going to fit in. He was very motivated and capable. Jay's first weekend, he made multiple DUI arrests. He hit the ground running. This caught the attention of a few of our more proactive members on station, and it led to a friendly, friendly competition and banter back and forth. We're known for some memes being posted around station and a big group of friends was born. Jay was an extremely humble young man. He never bragged, as the governor had already talked about, about his great arrests or going above and beyond to help assist somebody in the public. The corporals even started calling him stealth fighter because of the way he conducted himself. He never wanted the attention put on him. Recently, Jay volunteered to assist Trooper Bishop with a group of juveniles at a local school, at a local district judge's office. They all had some truancy issues. Trooper Bishop told me that Jay stole the show immediately. The kids absolutely loved hearing from him. I got to watch him interact with the kids, and the entire time he had a big smile on his face the one we all loved seeing every day. He did so well that he recruited himself into assisting Trooper Bishop with future duties when it comes to CSO activities. And he was more than happy to get involved. Jay had goals in our department, one of which was becoming a criminal investigator someday. So that led Jay to a few training requests actually quite a few training requests. We, uh, we try to limit one every six months, and Jay was planning on putting in for Operation Nighthawk. Well, as I was discussing it in the patrol room, I asked the other trooper who was putting in how many trainings he had so far this year. He didn't have any, and I said, that's good, because Jay has put in for a bunch, and I don't know if I can keep sending people at the rate Jay's going through trainings. He turned around, and he had this like bright, scared look on his face, like, Sarge, I'm sorry. I didn't know I couldn't put in for so many. And I told Jay, it's OK. You're a hard worker with goals. We're going to sneak you into as many trainings as I can get you to until I start getting in trouble. Jay also had a few leave and scheduling requests, one of which being PSU football, which if you know in Troop G, that's a big deal. We provide a lot of support for those games. 
Now, he had the privilege of coming from a large station where apparently they're allowed to approve leave on weekends. Small station of Lewistown, we do not have that opportunity. We're in minimums. So Jay tried to be slick and put in leave requests for a weekend. Happened to be a few of them for the larger games. So I had to deny those and bring them back and explain, I'm going to mark you down for a long weekend, because that's the only way we're going to be able to get you to these games. He was more than happy about that. He also was putting in for a cruise. He sent me an email asking for January 27th, 23, to February 5th of 23 off. I was a little confused if he met November into December, so I replied back, do you mean 24? And I quote, his response was, I was going to use my time machine, but I'll wait to 2024. It, it makes me feel great that Jay became part of our family so quickly and so comfortable with me that he had no problem giving me a couple jabs through email, so it's in writing. <laughs> Chloe, Angela, I want you both to know how much Jay was loved at Lewistown. Jay, I know you're watching over us. I promise we'll be there for Chloe and your mom. Brother, you will never, ever be forgotten. This time, it's my honor and privilege to invite forward Chloe, Jay's wife. Hello, my name is Chloe, and I have the honor of being Jay's wife. Jay has been in my life in some capacity ever since I can remember, from playdates in elementary school to our first date in high school. He's always been a part of my life. Standing here now, I'm really not sure how to exist in a world without him, as he is my entire world. If I could speak with Jay today, I would say, I love the way you look at me. I love the way you love me. I love the way you smile. And I love the way you laugh. His laughter was my favorite sound. Everyone who knew him knew that laugh. It was infectious. Jay would tell the corniest jokes, ones that weren't even funny. But he thought they were funny, and you would just laugh hearing his laughter. Nobody I know has the type of infectious joy that Jay had. He gave it like a gift to everyone he met with that laughter, with his million dollar smile. He believed that everyone deserved kindness. He treated everyone as human. When Jay became a Pennsylvania state trooper, he became all he ever wanted to be. He believed that in that role, he could make ongoing positive change, and he worked toward that goal every single day. When he received news of gunfire at the station, he desperately wanted to be beside his brothers and sisters. He ran toward gunfire on his day off. That's who Jay was, a protector, a hero. His life was taken from him. He deserved more than this. But I know that he wouldn't have wanted to be anywhere else but protecting his community, his family and friends, and his brothers and sisters. Although his time as a trooper was short, he left a lasting impact on everyone he met. Jay's life goal was to become a trooper, 
but he didn't want it for the badge. He wanted it so that he could make great change to help people, to protect his community and the people that he loved. And he did exactly that. He went above and beyond for every goal he ever strove for. And he was like that until the end. We celebrate him as a hero today, but he has always been my hero. The two of us shared a deep love of Penn State football. We've been season ticket holders since we were students. We've seen highs and lows across many seasons, and we always said that tough times don't last, but tough teams do. And Jay has always been my favorite teammate. I love him more than I can ever hope to describe. I'm angry and I'm broken that I have to stand in front of you and say these things today, but he deserves more honor and love than we could ever hope to give him. I love you, Jay. Thank you for being my everything. I knew that you would change the world, Jay Rougeau. I just never imagined that it would be like this. I realize that I've introduced everybody else so far today, but I haven't introduced myself. My name is Pastor Brian Ice. I've served St. Paul's Lutheran Church in Cory for the last 21 years and got to see Chloe grow and her love with Jay throughout their lives. Today is not about answers, because at this point, the questions don't even make sense. Today's about love. It's about in our anger and our frustration and, our, and our, our, our feeling of despair in the world. It's in all those things, finding a way to find the sliver of thanks in our hearts. That God made Jay to be the wonderful man he was. That we got to know him. That even though we want him here with us, that he is safe in the kingdom to come. And that we too will see him again in God's everlasting kingdom. With all that said, I, I'd like to invite you into a love story. And, and, and even though Chloe is a very big part of that love story, it has so many other levels because like everybody has said, when you met Jay, you loved him. He was just that kind of person. From the little boy who's whose giggle was infectious and would light up a room to the man who gave his life in sacrifice to protect. The little boy that liked model airplanes. He skateboarded, but only for about a hot minute. That didn't last too long. And he and his brother would get in the wagon with no brakes on it and take it up to the top of the hill and then ride down. BMX bikes and the pocket rocket that Jay rode up over the curb and busted it all up into pieces. The little boy who wanted to and went to the State Police Youth Week sponsored by the American Legion, in which his mother promptly got a speeding ticket driving home from. <laughs> Jay was a proud member of a group called the Basement Boys. Where's Nick? There he is. A group of boys and Corey that would get together and, and, and what they would do is they would show up at a friend's house and they would bring their own TV, their own gaming systems, food, and they would invade one of their friend's basements for a night. But just to show you what kind of boys they were, 
They also brought money along to help the family pay for the electric that they were about to use. The older he got, the more that love of sports emerged from baseball to football, cross country, wrestled a little, but as it's been said, basketball was life. He even tried to get into, a go into golf for a little bit, but it was kind of a love-hate relationship. He loved it, but it made him so mad. You guys even set up stuff in the backyard for him to get better at it. And through it all, there was Chloe. That's been said from kindergarten play dates to the first time Jay asked her out. And not only did he ask her out, he then went to her mom, Melanie, and said, Can, I'd like to take Chloe to the movies, and I'd like to drive in my car. Can I have your permission? Now, it was an afternoon date, and they got in the car, and they listened to Motto by Drake and 90s rap music on their way, not even realizing that the entire time they never talked about what movie they were going to go see. So they got there, they finally decided they picked Mission Impossible, I think it was, right? After all was said and done, he took her home, pulled up in front of the house and said, I'm going to get out and I'm going to give you a hug. He got out, gave her a hug, got back in the car, and went and played basketball. <laughs> I was honored. The day Chloe reached out to me to preside at your wedding. It's always an honor for pastors when those little ones that we've watched grow up for so long come back again and say, we still want to be a part. So it was an honor when, when Chloe reached out to me and said, I, I'd like you to do our wedding, and we did. And I got to stand in front of you when you both said, I do. And my heart broke with you. The other night the phone rang that brought us to here today. You know, oftentimes when we stand at a service, a celebration of life, a funeral, memorial service, whatever you want to call it, we do talk about how great a person's sense of humor was, but Jay's sense of humor was a little off. I mean, he did think everything was funny. But the best part about that was that it meant he was always laughing. Jay was one of those guys that, you know, sometimes you looked at him and you went, how come he got it all? Perfect, straight, bright white teeth, never needed braces and lit up a room when he smiled. He could eat. He could eat a lot. He could eat his whole meal and then finish off what your meal was left and you still wouldn't even see him gain a pound. He would even tell Chloe when Chloe was going to get food, no, I don't want any fries. Well, when the fries came home, not only did Chloe's fries start to get eaten, he also shared them with the dogs. Jay always wanted to be in law enforcement, to serve, to help. To care. He wanted his life to have meaning, to be about something. Jay wanted his life to change the things that he could change for others. He was always helping, always looking out. And once you met him, he was your, your favorite coworker, your favorite person. This loss is deep, it is powerful, and it will linger for a long time long time. But in this tragedy, if we can find that sliver of thanksgiving, that thanksgiving to, that we know we have a God who knows what it's like to sit at a friend's grave and just weep from the depths of his soul. We can be thankful that we have a God that is true to his promises and when the time was right, when the time came, 
Jay was taken home. We can be thankful that we got to know him, that we were allowed to be changed by him. We can be thankful that Jay has been reunited with Jason and Grandma Helen, Stella, and all the other saints that have gone before us. We can be thankful. We can be thankful today because this is not the end. This is just a new beginning. And most of all, we can be thankful that we will see Jay again in the kingdom to come. When I was a little boy, in our family vacations, we would go and see my grandmother. And when the trip was done and we were getting ready to leave, we would always go and as little kids, you know, bye, Grandma. We'll see you. Bye, Grandma. My grandmother would say, no, 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 no. It's never goodbye. It's auf Wiedersehen, which means until we meet again. In our loss and in our tragedy today, it is still auf Wiedersehen, for we will see him again. In Jesus' name, amen. At this time, Commander Richard Manning will sing Amazing Grace.
that saved a wretch like me. this time our service continues with the prayers. I'm going to end each prayer petition with the words, Lord, in your mercy. I would like to have you respond with the words, hear our prayer. Let us pray to our Lord who was, is, and always will be our source of life and faith. Merciful God, your son wept at the death of Lazarus. Look with kindness upon Jay's family whose lives are now filled with sorrow and pain at his death. Grant the tender healing of your love and the peace of your everlasting kingdom. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Living God, source of compassion, our hearts are filled with grief at the death of Jay. Draw, near, draw us near to you in faith and in love to one another, that we may be one with all of your faithful children. Help us to see your loving face in the kindness of those around us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of salvation, we remember with thanksgiving all who have died in the hope of the resurrection. Surround them with the light of your presence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Gracious God, we come before you this day in pain and sorrow. We grieve the loss of Jay, a precious human life. Give your grace to those who grieve, that they may find comfort in your presence and be strengthened by your spirit. Be with this family as they mourn and draw them together in your healing love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. God of all grace, we give you thanks because by his death, Jesus destroyed the power of death. And by his resurrection has opened the kingdom of heaven to all believers. Make us certain that because he lives, we shall live also. And that neither death nor life nor things present nor things to come shall be able to separate us from your love which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. We come to you now, Father, asking you to join us as we pray the prayer your son taught us so many years ago. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. This time we will play How Great Thou Art. The words are in your bulletin. Feel free to sing if you would like.
Please rise. Let us pray. Into your hands, O merciful Savior, we commend your servant, Jay. Acknowledge, we humbly beseech you, a sheep of your own fold, a lamb of your own flock, a child of your own redeeming. Receive him into the arms of your mercy, into the blessed rest of everlasting peace, and into the glorious company of the saints in light. Amen. May the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. May the Lord look upon you with his favor and grant you his peace. Amen. Let us go forth in the name of Christ.